Do you want to learn some of the best kept secrets and tricks of the trade that professional designers and artists swear by, but that literally no one is teaching? Well, I'm here to share five best kept secrets that all the pros know that you might be missing out on. Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I've been in the professional design and illustration industry for over 17 years, designing for some of the world's best known brands. And I've actually also owned my own design studio for over a decade. And so today I want to share some pro secrets with you that I've picked up along the way throughout the years that I think will really be able to help you along on your art journey. There are a lot of videos out there about traditional art techniques, which are the things that you learn in art school, in books, and on YouTube how-to videos. However, today's video will not be about that, but rather it will be about practical things that you learn on the job in a professional setting. So these are the unwritten rules and processes that no one really teaches you about, but that you just learn while you're on the job at a professional design or illustration agency. So without further ado, let's jump right in to secret number one. This one is going to completely change the way you think of your whole drawing process because it involves thinking like a designer instead of like a fine artist. And so secret number one is one that is commonly used in design agencies, and that is to use layers of tracing paper to develop your drawings. What you do is build your sketch using separate layers of tracing paper, like a diorama kind of. And this allows you to play around with the position of your design elements and stay really, really flexible. It also gives you the ability to easily make tweaks to selective parts of your drawing without having to erase anything. So this method is great because you can be really spontaneous and stress-free with trying a lot of different options without being afraid that you're gonna ruin your sketch. And another benefit is that it allows you to save and swap in different layers so you can keep a record of the different variations that you've tried and try a lot of different options and just, you know, kind of go back and forth between them. I actually have a video that goes into the process in more detail, which I'll link right here in the card above if you're interested in learning more about this um, specific way of sketching. Speaking of sketching, this brings me to secret number two, which is probably one of the first things that I learned on the job. Don't rush your sketch. When I was a rookie and landed my first design job, I constantly felt like I had to get things done quickly to stay on schedule in the fast, fast pace of agency life. But what would often happen is that in an effort to go faster, I would skip the beginning stages of building strong ideas and concepts. And so my work and my designs would sometimes fall a little flat because there wasn't much substance in what I was doing. And then one day a colleague came by and gave me this really great advice. She said, and I quote, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I later learned that it's actually a mantra from the US Navy SEALs. And essentially what it means is that by going slowly and by being deliberate early on, it actually helps you plan things much more thoroughly, which in the grand scheme of things ends up speeding things up and making everything go much more smoothly. So that's something that I still think about a lot to this day because I know that a lot of people and myself included, we get really excited and want to jump straight into painting. And we're looking forward to doing the artsy thing and pulling out our paintbrushes and our paints and playing with everything. And what can happen is that we're in such a rush um, that we just sort of breeze through the sketch process and don't really plan ahead properly. So here's where it becomes tricky because in my opinion, your concept and your sketch development are everything. They are literally the roadmap and instructions to a good vinyl painting. And the more time you spend figuring out a smart and well-elaborated plan, the easier and more seamless everything will come together once you start painting. Secret number three, less is more. We see this and hear about this all the time as it relates to fashion or interior design or general lifestyle. But the same thing also holds true for art. 
And sometimes the most elegant things come from the beauty of simplicity. How much can you say with less? What is the minimum number of brush strokes you can use to get the same idea across? Limit your color palette. Make sure your painting has a clear focal point and avoid overworking areas and see how that changes the way you make choices in your art. And while it might be tempting to use every single art supply and every single color and you know the whole kitchen sink, sometimes the less you have available to you, the more creative you can actually be. And um, the act of overcoming that handicap can really help to improve your art. So what would happen if you just limited yourself to just two colors for an entire painting? Not only does that push you to be more creative and think outside the box, but it's also a lot of fun to problem solve and to challenge yourself. And artists, if you are enjoying this video so far, please consider giving me a thumbs up um, to let me know that you're enjoying this content. And while we're on the subject, don't forget to subscribe as well, because if you're not subscribed to my channel, we're doing a lot of fun videos here, and I would love, love, love to have you with me on this art journey. Secret number four. This shouldn't come as a surprise coming from me at this point if you've been watching my channel, but I've said it once and I'll say it again and again and again. It's invest in professional grade materials. I talk about this a lot on many of my videos and I actually have a video about student grade versus professional grade watercolors, which I'll link um, in the description below. But basically, especially with art supplies, you get what you pay for. And one of the reasons why professional materials cost more than drugstore or Amazon brands is that quite simply, they're better engineered, which ultimately makes our jobs much easier. The beauty of quality materials is that they're made with the artist in mind. So they perform better, they mix better, the colors pop more, they're easier to handle. And that's not to say that, you know, some of the cheaper brands out there don't, you know, have good products or anything. But overall, I would say that your best bet is always to stick with reputable brands and to make sure that it is of a professional quality. For paints, I would stick with the recognizable artist brands like Winsor & Newton, Daniel Smith, Sennelier, Schmincke, Old Holland, and pretty much anything sold at a proper art supply shop. Trust me, it makes a difference. All right, we're down to our last secret tip, which is tip number five. And this one, in my opinion, is the one that separates the professionals who do this for a living from, you know, your casual hobbyist. And I think it's something that everybody out there can benefit from. Tip number five is to stop taking things personally. You might be thinking that, well, it's my art, so I'm leaving my soul out there, and this is like a personal endeavor. What I mean by this tip is that most professionals try not to take things personally and attach their sense of self-worth to what they create. I remember coming out of art school and getting uh, my portfolio reviewed by clients and by design agencies. And to me, it was really shocking at times how completely brutally honest feedback was from clients. And it was really hard to hear. But quickly, I learned that I had to check my ego at the door and not allow the result of what I create to dictate my sense of self-worth. And I know that it's easier said than done because, you know, as artists, I know how much the results of your efforts mean to you. They, they mean a lot to me too. But if there's anything to take away from this is that there will be days where you struggle, where you have artist's block and where you create bad art. It happens to all of us, but this is where it matters. It does not mean that you are a bad artist or in any way unworthy because today's painting has literally nothing to do with your talent or your progress or who you are as a painter. It's just what you made today. And the fact that you still pick up after failures, have an open mind to learn from them, and you keep going, most important of all, is what is inevitably going to make you succeed in the long term. So those are my five insider secrets. And let me know in the comments below if any of these intrigue you or if they resonated with you in any way. Um, and while you're at it, let me know in the comments as well if you have any closely guarded um, art and process secrets that you wanna share with myself or with other people in this community, because I just love reading all of your comments and just getting to know um, all of you and, um, and, and reading everything that you leave for me. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me on these art videos and I will see you next time.